Today on The Big Canvas, we follow a local high school student who uses the power of creation to overcome the anxiety of being bullied. The winner of the 2018 Brush Off competition speaks of what steps she took to come out on top. And an artist who takes different areas of Toronto and turns them into masterpieces. All this and more coming up on today's episode of The Big Canvas. Hello and welcome to The Big Canvas. I'm Robert Kabinga. Today we've got a lot on the show for you. We meet with Megan Meckler, the winner of the 2018 Brush Off competition. She takes us along the journey of how she got to the top. I had a manuscript that was due to be submitted um, on Monday and the brush off was on Saturday and I had to get it to my professor on Friday. And Megan came into my office with this enormous red painting, oil painting of a bull. So she became a bit of a kind of, um, you know, she was one of my star pupils. She was also doing these um, drawings in her notebook and I asked to have a look at them. And there was this beautiful kind of spidery writing and wonderful illustrations which she was doing and little cartoons of the people uh, working all while she was doing uh, the actual work and still doing it better than anyone else. So for the brush off I wanted to make sure of course that I had a fair thickness of the paints because they provide the paints so I don't need to be stingy. <laughs> the whole point of this tool is to actually remove paint so my first go through was with this. There was a couple times when I used this paintbrush because of its natural curve to work in some like curved looks to the feathers. You never finish art, you simply abandon it. I feel like that's especially true when you have a half hour to paint. So I did the first round and then there was the break for the second half of the first round and I painted um, an owl because on the way driving into the brush off I actually saw an owl. I wasn't very confident with my second painting at all so I felt it could go either way with getting into the third round. It felt like something that would just be really lovely to be able to continue to participate in, especially because I was so tired at that point in the night and the painting was keeping me awake. I was actually in the washroom when they were announcing, brushing off all my paints um, when they announced it. And so I came out and was thrilled to hear my name announced. When they announced the that it was me, I, I had a I was debating in my mind how to most appropriately celebrate that because I wanted to break out and do a little dance. Um, but it seemed like everyone else was just standing around really dignified and such. So it was that internal struggle. So I ended up like doing a little shoulder thing. I think it would have been quite interesting if we had all actually decided to celebrate as we wished. But we, it was really great fun. And it was really touching to have all my friends and family there for it then. That was Megan Meckler. She's really mastered the art of balancing school and painting. Now we meet with Robert the Artist, a self-taught oil painter who turns landscapes into paintings. Being an artist is um, never easy for most of us, that's for sure. Well, I met him at the beach in Key West, Florida. He was playing volleyball and caught my eye. One of our early dates that made me fall in love with him was him taking me sailing off the waters of Key West, Florida. I'm a sailor myself, so I love to paint sailboats and uh, always some good action in the harbor. It was a long love story, but I fell in love with an artist and we developed a, a business from his talents. There is a bit of an adrenaline rush. It's true, when you get there and open up your easel, and put your painting your, that you're working on on your easel. It's a lot of fun. I mean, every two minutes you're meeting some, some character, whether uh, usually somebody in the neighborhood, and that's a lot of fun too. I get told the history of what I'm painting. One of the funnest places that I painted on location was this one here of the Flatiron Building, downtown Toronto. Here's another one where I painted the original right on location, Queen and Spadina. Whenever I would not feel like going out to paint, you know, I would just think of Roberto, 
I mean, he lived in the shelter at night, but he was there every day working on his drawings. And he was one character that I met uh, downtown Toronto that uh, really inspired me. He's been well received for his first year being here, and I would love to see him in his studio painting. Sun hitting all them big trees, and that's what I love about Ontario. It's a land of giant trees everywhere. If you saw his Hamilton skyline, it'll be exciting to get out and show the, the people of Hamilton, the city where they grew up and they love, and see what he creates next. Well, I've had it pretty good, you know, I'm not getting rich or anything from my art yet, uh, hopefully someday, but you just gotta keep plugging along through good, good times and bad times. Just keep working on it, keep believing, and uh, hopefully it all works out. Robert the Artist is truly a talented painter. Now, on our next segment, we speak with Benjamin, a high school student who has overcome struggles by creating masterpieces. I actually got bullied quite a lot as a kid and uh, that just festered up. I actually got bullied for being artistic. Yes, the bullying definitely uh, was an issue for him. I think the art became a way for him to express himself. I was actually going through a pretty rough time when I painted this. I was really like contracting myself from everybody. I really needed to like sort things out, like emotionally. That room evolved, uh, so that was actually my mother's sitting room. Uh, it was a time that Benjamin spent a fair bit of time in there with my mom when she was, uh, she passed away when he was six years old. And uh, so then it became kind of the, the, the kids' playroom, hangout room after she had passed away. He started creating things in there. Um, I do recall one time coming home from work and him running and saying, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to. And I said, what <laughs> didn't you mean to? And there was like black paint <laughs> all over the place. And he had started painting uh, using house paint. This painting is by Benjamin Drobig and he was showing the social issue of homelessness and he showed it in a really interesting way. In Benjamin's future, I think he should continue to pursue his passion, which is art. And I think there's different outlets for that. I think uh, at the post-secondary stream, he could try to apply to specific colleges for certain programs. There's also wonderful foundations programs at places like Conestoga uh, that I think would be a really good portfolio building opportunity for him. I would like to actually paint professionally. I just thought it would be kind of good to get back at the kids who are putting me down for being artistic. Benjamin is truly a talented student. We'll be back right after these messages. Coming up after the break, we meet with a wood-burning artist who turns slabs of wood into art portraits, and an artist who always loves to paint the unexpected. Stay tuned for more of The Big Canvas right here on Rogers TV. I don't think anything I've ever done is perfect. I occasionally will have moments of, oh yeah, I really like that. But then, you know, a day later, I'll look at it again and go, oh, yeah, it's not as good as I thought it was. I went to college at OCAD, 
but I dropped out unfortunately and um, but at the time I was much younger and I don't agree with the choice that I made at the time but that's what I did. Last year I went back to school full-time in the Conestoga College Bachelor of Design program and my partner Tom has been very um, influential in that. Well her artwork and her graphic design work are very complementary and they're really on a spectrum. I think she really likes to bring a lot of her artistry to the graphic design. This was a really fun logo to work on. It's an art and music festival so I had to incorporate elements of both art and music into it. Outside shape of the logo is a is a guitar but it also implies a an artist palette with the paintbrush and little daubs of paint. We both were heavily involved with this production of The Merchant of Venice. I wrote the score and Andrea did the artwork. So this was my original drawing here. When I finished drawing this, I scanned it into my computer and then I digitized it in Adobe Illustrator, adding all the details. So all of this stuff was all hand rendered. The kind of the gold colors alluded to money, which is a big theme in this, uh, in this play. I tried to incorporate a lot of symbolism, but also um, imagery that it was reminiscent of Art Deco and Art Nouveau themes. Some of the artworks really kind of capture a, a sound or a musical concept and that will often just get me thinking in, a, in an interesting direction. I've never composed a piece specifically based on a piece of artwork but they've, they've sort of got me thinking about oh what would the sound of that be and how would that kind of flow? When I was little, I would get this weird dream of shapes floating in space, cylinders, and, and, and for some reason it gave me a lot of anxiety, I have no idea why. Using that idea and then breaking down shapes in the environment into very basic forms just feels right. You know, I can't explain why, but I think it's just a matter of balance. Next we meet with Cody Lerbetsky, a wood-burning artist whose art is adored by celebrities. Oh hey, this is Cody Lorbeski. You're on MTV Cribs. Just kidding. It's the Rogers. Big canvas. I started wood burning in 2013. Uh, I've been at it for about five years. This is one that I did for my cousin. That was his first wood burning one, and the fact that he gave it to me as a gift really made it special. I hold it near and dear to my heart and uh, I believe she does as well. Basically what I do is I do all the outlining with a wood burning pen. I take like a Prismacolor pencil, it's like a pencil crown. I color it in. A little bit about me uh, when it comes to, uh, to art. I've always been interested in it ever since I was a little child. Uh, all my school notebooks were, uh, were filled with the uh, doodlings and the, the columns of it. I, uh, I also picked up woodworking as a hobby. I, I went to school for that. That kind of kick-started my, uh, my passion for building stuff with my hands again. When I first started going to shows with these, uh, it was strictly me just literally showing up to the venue, uh, hoping to get through the security, uh, first and foremost with a piece of wood that like some people might consider that a weapon or something. I've been to a couple of these shows with him where he's got to meet the artist and get them autographed, and so that's been pretty cool to share those experiences with them. Knock on wood, I've had I've had a lot of luck and I've been able to meet some really cool idols of mine so far. I left a piece uh, for Gene Simmons uh, at a KISS concert and uh, kind of left it in good faith of, of the crew backstage to get it to him. Uh, lo and behold, about two and a half months later, I, uh, I get a message from Gene with a picture of him and he said that he loved it and that he's going to keep it. So that's kind of a personal highlight. Sometimes it's tough, not really the emotional side of it, but uh, just just kind of hanging in there because there's a lot of times where you'll, you'll take your stuff to the show, something might not get bought or someone might have a comment about, oh, you're doing it this way or that way. And I think you have to have that kind of mentality keep trucking along no matter what. Keep doing what he's doing and you know, follow his gut and follow his love and just keep going with it. Don't let anybody knock you down. The future looks good. I'm, I'm feeling awesome about uh, the kind of stuff I'm doing these days and the people that I'm working with. And uh, I just I just really look forward every day to uh, putting the wood burning pen down onto, onto the wood. So I'm going to show you my biggest frustration in life 
is a painting right over there. 2010 was when I was hoping to finish this for my show. As you can see, there's a lot left. <sighs> Carmen describes herself as very erratic, but she does follow things that she loves. He's got a top hat, and I put like a little bit of gold around his monocle, so he makes me happy. <laughs> I was born in Quito, Ecuador, and we moved up when I was only one. When I was growing up, my mom homeschooled my sister and I, so that afforded us a lot of freedom. We'd go to the library, and I always seemed to gravitate towards the art books and science books. The work that I create is heavily based off of that. This is my box of chocolates. <laughs> Normally when I show these works, I have a magnifying glass so that people can see it. When you bring them up in your painting like this, they, they fill your world. world. It's a struggle because sometimes when you're working, you feel, oh, I'm just repeating myself. This isn't interesting. This isn't new. What am I doing here? And there's a lot of doubt when you're creating work. But Christina has been pretty much a rock for me for the past few years. If anything's on her mind, whether it be work-related, school-related, relationships, just inner turmoil in general, we'll usually talk about that. She'll just call me later and I'm like, do you want to go for a pub? And we're like, yes, please, because then we can like debrief about our days. We get really excited about the same things and our level of excitement will like amp each other up. So then we'll be like, yes, yes, that's such a great idea. Oh, let's do it. And we get excited and we like excite each other. And that's something I Oh, I can't live without. This I've actually made in second year. It's a weird piece, but I have it up in the space because it just makes me so happy. I have a little pug that looks sad because he lives with two cats and I just, I look at it and I'm, yeah. Right now I'm finishing up my Masters of Information. I'm hoping to be working in the information field, particularly in libraries, and also at the same time work in the fine art world. Hopefully we'll see, we'll see that come to life. Next, we're turning up the heat with Kristen Moss and her artwork. I do do a lot of like sexually suggestive paintings, a lot of nudes, and everyone likes butts, so I've painted a lot of butts. I've always loved stripper shoes. They're tacky and plastic and ridiculous, but there's something about them that are just awesome. I really like this painting and like obviously, it's not for sale. I don't think anyone would want a portrait of Howard Stern's head in their home, but I do. I met Kristen through the pub that we both work at, serving pints and having a nice time. I commissioned her to make a piece for me for my, for my fifth anniversary as a gift for my fiance. So I took a picture that I had taken years ago when I was in my prime, and I had her paint it for me. So I thought she did a really, really, really good job. Like it looks like me, it's accurate, but it's her own style, like it's her own artistic twist, if you will. It hangs in our bedroom, so I think he liked it. The hardest part for me is having to like let go of my paintings. You fall in love with them, you spend hours and hours, especially if you're me, who's the slowest painter of all time. And then someone might be interested in buying it, but you know, you get so attached to it and then you let it go. So that part is kind of hard. It's nice when I can come back and see them again. <laughs> so like this painting, I sold to a friend and I went back and took it back. <laughs> I'm Nick Taylor, uh, owner of Dying Wish Tattoo. Kristen is my girl. She's like well-rounded, her style's all over the place really. It's, uh, she's very like, she explores a lot of different like avenues of art. It's, uh, it's cool because she's got her own thing going on. It's pretty cool to see, you know. You know, I have suffered from anxiety and depression, and when I'm painting, hours and hours and hours can go by. Like, I, will, I have painted for 16 hours straight. Luckily, I found an outlet that helped me, that, you know, turned my, turned my brain off for a while. So, like, it's looking around and seeing all this color around me, like, it's the best kind of therapy. Wow, was not a colorful segment. We'll see you after the break. Coming up on The Big Canvas, we get right into one of the most unique painters of the brush-off competition. 
Stay tuned for more of The Big Canvas right here on Rogers TV. Welcome back. Next, we meet with Jason, one of the most exciting competitors from the brush off. My family was actually sent to Australia in 1812 uh, as convicts from England. In my work, I like to show motifs of sailing uh, that connects into our history. I find that art is like life. You don't really know what's going to happen until you actually get to the point. You may make a plan for something to happen in a certain way, but as things go, things change and uh, life happens. Seven years is a long time. The breakup in that, it really puts things in perspective. It feels like being in an ocean where you're like, you know, you're at a crest of a wave like right now. Then you fall down into those troughs every once in a while. So sometimes when you can, you can find those things and try and use those as as fuel, there is like a, an energy that comes out in the work that you normally can't find. My good friend and uh, local artist Jim Tubb told me, just uh, paint like paint like a madman. This is KW's original painting competition. The brush off is currently in its seventh year. So they compete in four rounds, and at the end of the night, we have 35 incredible original works of art that goes up on the wall, and people can bid on them and take them home and hang them up uh, on their living room walls. The best part of the event is not only do artists, families, and friends come, but people from all over Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge, Guelph, Stratford, they come to this event to the museum to check out art being painted live. The artists are always out of their comfort zone. They're getting messy, they're running at their canvases, and some don't use canvases Three, at all. Two, one. Okay, I need your help. I need something to paint with, anything you got. Pop tab, receipt, anything you got in your purse, wallet, whatever, whatever it'll be. Come on, somebody got something, you guys got something. Cups, cups, you wanna take a phone? Seriously. I'll give you like a hundred bucks for it. Okay, here, here. Give me the phone. Thank you, humbly. I think Jason's art's really good, abstract. He's got a really great style, and he's really good at mixing his palette and his different colors together. Wasn't that crazy? He even started painting with a cell phone. <laughs> we'll see you after the break. We wrap things up right after these short messages, right here on Rogers TV. The Big Canvas was able to find many talented artists throughout our community. I hope you were able to take something away from this program and to create your own masterpieces. Thanks for watching, we'll see you soon.